Michael and Ryan here at the SI World Galactic something headquarters. And we are super excited to share with you today that 5.4 billion devices are gonna be coming on the market uh, literally by 2023. And we are bringing you the world's first Zigbee 3.0 motor. We feel like this technology, and we've been working on this for the last two years, will completely change the wireless landscape and shade and the entire industry. Today, we wanna to explain two-way mesh and the difference, cloud and the future of where this technology is gonna change your life. Michael, kick it off, man. Thank you. So we're here to talk about nodes. And in a two-way system, typically I'm gonna have a transmitter node and I'm probably gonna have some shade receiver nodes. And so I, I'm gonna be communicating in a two-way system to both, all three of these nodes. Um, also, if I have some sort of control, that control could be a third-party control, it could be Alexa, it could be anything, and that control usually is talking to, uh, sending the commands up. Okay, in a mesh system, same thing. We're gonna have a controller. In a mesh system, there's a slightly new concept that's called an edge router. The edge router devices are in the system. It's a game changer, right? So here's, a, here's an example of an edge router. And so I also have my shades like in the previous system. So the controller, it can talk to any of these. These can talk to each other. And the shades can talk to any of the edge routers as well, right? So now you have a, this is your mesh that you're building up. Okay, this is for reliability. It's for um, speed too, because mesh systems travel faster than the legacy two-way systems, much faster. So um, let's break it. I want to delete this edge router. Now what? So the nice thing about mesh, for especially for a, a Zigbee 3.0 system, is it have a self-healing. So what that means is. These device, this one device didn't need that to get back here. It has two other edge routers that can still go to. By the way, the internet was built in this same kind of mesh fashion. And what Ryan just did was in the, <laughs> in the early days of the internet was called a nuclear bomb took out that transmitter. And when the nuclear bomb took out that transmitter, this would automatically route to another transmitter and our military could still communicate with each other. I think our that, consumers need that. That's right, <laughs> nuclear proof. Okay, so Dude, how, how, how about something else? Oh, sorry. How about I was gonna say, let's nuke. Let's nuke a two-way system with a lightning bolt, which can happen. That's right. So let's say this, this is out, right? This system is dead. This control system, hey Alexa, open my shades. Guess what? It has nobody to talk to. It doesn't talk to these. Okay, now let's do the same thing. Lightning bolt through here. This takes this out. I forgot to draw the Alexa over here. So here's my control. Guess what? The Alexa is also a Zigbee 3.0 and also can talk to these nodes. What? Does not have to talk to this. And so in this, or even if there's not Alexa, let's say this is a little remote control that you have. So we have, at SI, we have cute little remote controls. That remote control is also a Zigbee 3.0 device. He doesn't need this, and he can control through this edge router that shade directly. Don't need this. Okay, so now, what does the edge, what does the mesh controller do? The mesh controller really is your access to the cloud. Yeah. Okay, so now what happens if that lightning strike happened in either of these projects? Well, in this kind of project, you go back, somebody helps you, they ship out a product a week later, the guy has to go back and reprogram this whole thing. So this is down for a long time. So here's the, the different scenario here. This system we just said is working. Yes, that lightning strike, it's got a big burnt mark on it. That, that guy is dead, but your whole system is still working. Okay, in the meantime, you're talking with SI award-winning support teams. We're gonna overnight you a new mesh controller and you're gonna put it back in. But unlike over here, where I'm reprogramming the whole thing just to get it working again, and remember, this is still working, when I put that back in, he connects to the cloud and on the cloud, all of the data that was originally configured in here goes back to this right away. So it's like you didn't even miss a step. Yeah, that battery 
uh, monitoring and being able to actually proactively solve problems. So if your batteries are low and or you have a problem with the system, it's gonna notify you before you even know about it. I think the cloud's a true game changer for the whole system and how robust it can be. That's right. The cloud allows remote access, remote monitoring, which is the battery, or anything else that you want. You, so it gives the dealers a proactive way, right? You, you're From a dealer point of view, you might know that there's a problem in the pool house before the customer knows. And you can proactively get there and, and do everything, or just to set up a time to come out to charge all the batteries. What is the future of where Zigbee 3.0 is going. Give us a little his history of where wireless is versus where Zigbee 3.0 is gonna take us. Perfect, okay. Uh, where wireless has been, and that's a fair term for it, has been two-way, okay. Has been systems like that um, were proprietary. They, they didn't talk to each other. What you're gonna see really in the future is that from cloud to cloud infrastructure, from the devices themselves across the same network, and the, the self-healing is like the first part of that, but you're gonna see self-diagnostics, self-everything, self-the-battery. So the whole thing is a game changer because all of your devices, your so your Sonos devices, your audio devices will be on that, your Nest devices will be on that, everything will be on this. Yeah, what so. I truly love is these edge routers are currently gonna be plugs out of the gate. But as you look to the future and we have billions of devices coming online, we'll talk to Alexa, we'll talk to Hue, in fact, those are actually already natively working and numerous other devices, wall switches, you name it. So literally you have a hidden mesh network within your house and homes that are anywhere from 2,000 to 5,000 to 10,000 square feet will all of a sudden become almost as robust as a wired system. And that's never happened before. So I think yeah. all of this combined is a true game changer and will finally give the world what it's been waiting for for years. And we are super humble to be the first company to introduce this new wireless technology into the shade industry. Rock and roll, Michael. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, can you explain the security level that we have with the mesh network versus like a two-way or an old any type of? Old Absolutely. Wire? So on a on a system like this, there's really no encryption. Uh, that means this is easily hacked if somebody really wanted to. In fact, with just a garage door opener. So there's there's some really simple stuff you can do here. Over on this side, this is bank grade encryption you have 128 bit encryption these messages you mean just this button press from here to here got financial you know, encryption <laughs> yes it did yes it did it's just as important as your trade on e-trade so that <laughs> <laughs> so oh and speed the one thing that we haven't uh, talked about um this <laughs> these systems are not even draw a know, horse and carriage <laughs> yeah so that's 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 what this system is because you're really talking about 4800 baud okay so over here we're at 250 kilobits a second so 250k versus this one you know, so, so um, speed. Which, you know, the data amount isn't a lot of data, but when you mesh out an entire house, it becomes a lot more data. It's a lot of data. And we all think that everything's fast enough until we install a big job and Correct. it slows down. Correct. And again, you're not sending a lot of data here, but what you do want is when you hit the button, you want the shade to go up. Hey, what? <laughs> you don't want, when you hit the button here and you're like, uh, twiddling your thumbs and then eventually it goes up, you know? So here it goes. So speed is really talking about latency. So when somebody hits a button, they want it to work right now, not like 10 seconds later. Hey, can you also explain real quick the actual frequency difference between yes. these two? Because I know that this is a lot more broad. Correct. And works better with brick, so steel. Oh, uh, uh, sandbags. Through the normal construction types, um, this system right here struggles a little bit. First of all, this is not, this is a non-ISM band. So ISM means industrial, scientific, and medical. So this is in a non-band uh, that the FCC regulates highly, so you're very limited. So if you looked on a scope and you looked at this, that's what the signal looks like. And by the way, it's only one frequency. Okay, 
Conversely, over here, we're in an ISM band. Worldwide works in every country. Okay, now the signal strength is like this. So the FCC allows much greater. That's the scale. <laughs> there okay, you go. Just making sure. It, yeah, it's official. <laughs> the other thing, the other thing is this hops around. So here's one frequency. Oh, there's a microwave going on, blah, and all that stuff. It switches to another frequency automatically. So there's 15 different channels that goes around that hops around and it just looks for an interference free. So there's lots of reasons why this is more reliable and works. Awesome. I love when you hit the button and your shade actually works. Yes. That's always a that's always a game changer. So